Hey everyone, happy Monday morning. We are glad that you decided to join us for daily worship today. We're going to pick up right where we left off at church yesterday. If you were here at one of our PCC campuses or online, you heard a new song called Echo. And we're going to start with that song this morning and then we're going to sing Jesus We Love You. So if you get out those lyrics, we're going to do it together. Here we go. When night is falling. Night is falling, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. And I've decided I'm not good enough. Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo And your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Echo in my soul Every season, you keep repeating your promises to me. Now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not good Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo And your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo An echo in my soul Decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo And your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo, echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo, an echo in my soul. Oh. Oh, 
cause your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Cause Jesus, we love you. And oh, how we now have a home all that was lost has found this place in him you lift up here is you make us strong instead you took made us beautiful for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song Jesus we love you oh how we love you you are that's true for you today because as we gather together for morning worship one of the things that we try to hold in common is our faith together and our trust in God for the day to come and we're going to actually talk about that today but first let me back up and uh, kind of in history a little bit Harry Truman became president in 1945 and that followed 14 years of FDR uh, Franklin Roosevelt being president and if you can imagine, I mean, we've never had that before. We've never had that since. Such a long-term presidency. Somebody who had really absorbed a lot of power and trust and authority in, in the country. And then you've got his vice president who nobody knew really becomes the president. 
And soon after Harry Truman gets into office, uh, a friend of his tells him about a plaque he had seen at a prison when he was uh, there visiting a prison. And that plaque, that little plaque said, the buck stops here. And Harry Truman had one of those made, and he put it on his desk, the desk, the president's desk, and it sat there. And what he wanted to convey, and he often related to it in his speeches, what he wanted to convey was, I don't have anybody else that I can blame. At the end of the day, the buck stops here. I'm the president. I, get, I have to make decisions, and, and what, come, come what may, good or not good, I have to own it. I have to own the decision. I don't have anybody else to blame. One of the leadership principles that I teach to our team and leaders that I train is that we assign credit when things go well and we absorb blame when things don't. At the end of the day, the leader, whatever it is that you lead, whatever it is you, or you're in charge of, you, you have to acknowledge that the buck stops here and, and I don't have anybody else to blame if I'm the one that made the decision. And, uh, and if, if it's an organization or a team that I lead or whatever, I absorb blame, but I assign credit. That is, when things go well, I'm always going to give credit to the team. I actually believe that. I believe that it's not it's something that, that they did to help make happen. And so we le good leadership principle is that we absorb blame and we assign credit. Well, people are actually often the opposite. Uh, folks, most people live in this world where we absorb credit and talk about when things go well, it must be something I did, <laughs> and we assign blame. If something doesn't go well, it must be somebody else's fault. Interestingly, uh, this, is a, this is something that is lived out in the pages of the Bible, in the scripture that we're going to look at today. If there's anybody that we love to blame, it's God. If there's anybody we love to blame, it's God, and that happens uh, plenty of times and particularly early in the Bible. Now, let me make a note about the Bible reading plan that we're doing. We're doing Word of God Speak Part 4, Part 4, but here's the thing. It is a seven-day-a-week plan. It's a seven-day-a-week plan. So if you are with us on Friday and you try to read the next day today, you're not going to be with us. So it's a seven-day-a-week plan. We're assuming that you're going to continue to read on the weekends and Monday we'll pick up with the next day. I think that makes today day 11. Don't quote me on that. What I am saying, though, is that uh, you have to read seven days a week and, and to stay with us. We're going to assume that's happening, so we're going to go from Friday uh, to add two days to it and be on Monday. Okay, so we're in Exodus. All that means is that we're in Exodus chapter 5 and the first few verses of chapter 6 today. That's what we're supposed to be reading together, and I really hope that you do that. It's an important uh, uh, story, and it's this is the whole book is named for the event that happens. It's the Exodus. In short, the people find themselves in slavery in Egypt. This is a critically important part of the story of the people of God. We call them the Israelites or the Hebrews or the Jews, and uh, this is played out. We see it happen again and again and again, even in the New Testament, in the story of Jesus, it's referred to. So if you don't understand the story, you really can't understand what happens later in the Bible. Well, anyway, they end up in captivity, and God's trying to rescue them. And so God has a plan to rescue them, which you and I would agree. We would say, does God have a plan? Well, sure, I guess God has a plan. We, we say it casually, but God does have a plan, and he has a plan for them. And things get worse before they're going to get better. Things get worse before they're going to get better. And then the people, when, when, when things get worse, people do what they do. They assign blame. And they blame God. And so they, they yell at Moses about how things have gotten worse, not better, even though Moses said they were going to get better. And in, verse, in chapter 5, verse 22, Moses goes back to God and says, Why, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? So the people blame Moses and kind of blame God, but mostly Moses. And then Moses blames God for the whole thing. And at the end of the day, all the blame ends up at God. And here's what God says. Interestingly, God, if you read into chapter 6, in verse 2, God says to Moses, I am the Lord. I'll come back to that in a minute. Later on, in verse 6, he says, now, he, so he tells Moses, he says, I'm, the, I'm God. And then he says to, the, to Moses, he says, you tell the Israelites, I'm God. So he's trying to remind them, hey, this, I have a plan. And so God goes on from there. He says, I'm God and I will. And then from there on, from verse 6 on, over and over and over and over, God says, you tell those people, I'm God and I will. 
I will bring them out. I will rescue them. I will wait, make them my people. I will fulfill my promise. I will do everything I said I would do. I'm God. See, here's the thing about you and me. It's a principle I'm not sure I've ever actually said this way, and it's worth you thinking about today as you read this piece of scripture. You can trust God or you can blame God, but you can't do both. You can trust God or you can blame God, but you can't do both. I believe that God has a plan. When things aren't going well, I still believe God has a plan. And at the end of the day, I have decided to live my life in such a way that I can take these pages of Exodus and learn from those people's mistake and say, I'm not going to do that. When things get bad, I'm going to sift through it all and I'm going to say, I trust God. Somehow or another, God will. And that's the text that comes out of this. God says, I'm God and I will. And our job is to say, okay, God, I'm with you and I trust you. May that be true for you today. Let me offer a prayer with us together. God, uh, may this day as we move through all the things we're going to encounter, good and not so good, may we completely trust you instead of blaming you today. I, our prayer together today, God, is that we would know deep in our soul that you will, somehow you will, we don't even know what the, what the outcome will be, but we know you have a plan. We know that it's good for us. And we thank you for being the God that... Um, sort of sticks in there with us when we try to blame you and when we don't trust you. Thank you for what's going to happen today. We give it to you. We're going to give you credit for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you make it a great day. See you right back here tomorrow at 730.